a giant snake suddenly appears in Kaaba. Muslims are terrified. They were doing the Hajj. The giant snake surprisingly showed up and warned the people in the scene. Snakes have a significant role in the Quran as the messenger of God. Religious people think this is the consequence for the Muslims' acts. Is this a warning from Jesus who is also a prophet of Islam? Or is there any hidden mystery behind the strange phenomenon? I invite you to watch until the end of this video to understand what is happening in Kaaba, Mecca. Getting back to the question I mentioned previously, is this a warning from Jesus who is also a prophet of Islam? And does the giant snake at Kaaba, Mecca, symbolize another meaning? Or is there any hidden mystery behind the strange phenomena? To answer these questions, let's read the Quran. A giant snake suddenly appeared beside the Holy Kaaba while people were doing the Hajj. People in the scene are terrified. They didn't know why the ancient snake appeared. Jesus has given us many signs as warning for the beast and evil inside Kaaba. We discovered how a snake served as a watchman for Allah in the past and how a beast will serve as a messenger of Allah in the future. But it does not stop there. We also find Allah empowering Satan, another one of his ministers, to accomplish his purpose to mislead mankind. Study the following Quranic verses carefully. Surah 2. Iblis said, Then, by thy power, I will put them all in the wrong, except thy servants amongst them, sincere and purified by thy grace. Satan said, By your might, then I will surely mislead them all. Accept your chosen slaves amongst them, faithful, obedient, true believers of Islamic monotheism. Can you believe this? With the exception of the worshippers of Allah, Satan misleads the entire world by the power and might of Allah. Ironically, we find Satan having high praises for the worshippers of Allah. This in itself speaks volumes. Is it not strange to find Satan invoking the name of Allah to carry out his crafty acts against those not submitting to Allah? Satan declares, by thy power, I will put them all in the wrong. However, what is even more surprising is that we find Allah working in unison with Satan. Allah works along with Satan to accomplish the wicked intention of Satan to mislead the unbelievers. Historically, serpents and snakes represent fertility or a creative life force. As snakes shed their skin through sloughing, they are symbols of rebirth, transformation, immortality, and healing. The Ouroboros is a symbol of eternity and continual renewal of life. However, in many versions of scriptures, snakes act as evil and punishment. In the Bible, snakes are almost always pictured as loathsome creatures, associated with poison and craftiness. As amoral creatures, snakes are not evil in themselves, but they are a handy metaphor for evil in many passages. Ever since Satan spoke his lies through the serpent to Eve, the snake has been associated with sin. In hadiths, kill all snakes kill the snake that has two white lines on its back, as well as the snake that has a short tail for verily, they snatch away your eyesight and they cause a woman. Sahih Bukhari, Hadith, 3297, Sahih Muslim, Hadith 2233. And kill all types of snakes, whomsoever does not kill the snake, fearing its revenge is not from us. Sunan Nasai al-Mushtaba, Hadith, 3,194, and Sunan Abi Dawood, Hadith, 5,249. But it also said that, the complete negative karma of killing a snake has the ripened aspect result of rebirth in hell in the lower realms. The possessed result is that even when good karma ripens and you are reborn as a human being, you still suffer and have many problems in life, including dangers of death because of killing a snake. You live in places where there are a lot of contagious diseases, obstacles to your health, and so forth. However, killing snakes for protection of yourself, your family, your beloved, is allowed, and don't let the killing into your habit. When you do let it, then you will be stuck in the endless cycle of suffering. In most verses of scriptures, snakes represent death, destruction, evil, temptation, and deceit. But if the snake represents such negative metaphors and meaning in scriptures, why would Allah allow it to appear in Kaaba? Does the giant snake at Kaaba, Mecca, symbolize another meaning? The Task of the Beast of Allah The following Islamic sources reveal to us the task of the beast and the nature of its message. 
The task of the beast will be to distinguish the believers from the non-believers. With Prophet Musa's Moses' staff, it will draw a line on the forehead of every believer, whereby his face will become bright and luminous, and with the ring of Suleiman. Solomon. It will seal the nose of every non-believer, whereby his whole face will become black. Thus there will be complete distinction between the Muslim and non-Muslim, so that if many parties sit at a dinner table, the Muslim and non-Muslim will be distinguished. Abu Huraira Musnad Ahmadir Dirmidi. It is a huge creature that will come out from the earth, a beast other than man. Nobody will be able to escape it. It will stamp the Muslim by writing believer between his eyes, and stamp the non-Muslim by writing kafir between his eyes. As Sunan Awarida Fil Fata. The beast will talk to people and say, Mankind had no faith in our revelations Ibn Kathir. According to Islamic sources, the beast will appear three times during the time of the end. However, it is the final appearance that will matter most. In its final appearance it will emerge from the Grand Mosque at Mecca. The Hadith by Tabrani, which is based on the authority of the renowned Muslim scholar Huzaifa bin Yusay, testifies that the beast will come out from Al-Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. Thus, the Kaaba, which is situated in the central open courtyard of Al-Masjid al-Haram, will be the throne of the beast. See also Imam Qurtubi's Tazkira and Muhammad al-Barzanji's Isha Ali Ashrat al sa Before we go any further to the topic, I have a question to test your learning. The question is, what is the true reason Adam and Eve were banished? Adam wants to taste the fruit of life. Eve is hungry and eats the fruit. Eve is convicted by Satan and does the act because Adam and Eve had eaten the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The answer is D, in Genesis 3, 22 to 23. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. Now let's get back from where we left. As we can see, the beast has been identified not only with Islam but with the holiest site of Islam, the Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. The interesting opinion by the scholars of Islam is that they believe the beast is none other than the snake which supposedly guarded the Holy Kaaba during pre-Islamic days. Great scholars like Ibn Abbas are of the opinion that the beast is actually the snake that guarded the Kaaba in Mecca. In the commentary, Din Tafsir, by Imam al-Qurtubi which is based on the authority of Ibn Abbas, we find the following interesting clarification concerning this snake of Islam. Obeying Allah's command the Prophet Ibrahim Abraham, with the help of his son Ismail Ishmael, built the Holy Kaaba. He dug a well inside the Holy Kaaba, which was to the right of who entered it, and acted as a safe to all the gifts that were presented to the Kaaba which were kept inside it. At the time of Jurham, the gold and silver were stolen many times from the Kaaba, thus the tribe of Jurham decided to choose a man amongst them to keep guard. Unfortunately, one day the guard himself decided to steal the gifts of the Kaaba. Taking the opportunity as it came, he climbed down the well and began to gather what he could in a piece of cloth. While he was busy, Allah sent a stone on him, which closed the well and thus he was unable to escape. From that day, Allah sent a snake to guard the Kaaba. The snake lived in the well guarding the gifts of the Kaaba for over 500 years. Exposed to the wearing factors of nature, the walls of the Kaaba at the time of Quraysh, slightly before the time the Prophet received prophethood, had become weak and part of the covering had also burnt. Thus the Quraysh decided to rebuild the Kaaba. However, the snake prevented them from demolishing the Holy Kaaba every time they tried. Finally, they stood at the place of Ibrahim and prayed, it, O oh Allah, if you are happy in its rebuilding, then make it possible and take care of this snake. Allah sent an eagle which took the snake towards Ajad. This snake is referred to in the fourth opinion. Yes, the most holy shrine of Allah, the Kaaba, was once guarded by a snake. Before the arrival of Islam, the Arab Quraysh tribe worshipped a pantheon of idol gods. They were pagans. These pagans entreated Allah, O oh Allah, if you are happy in its rebuilding, then make it possible and take care of this snake. And Allah answered their prayers by transferring the snake. Let us put aside the beast for a moment, 
and ponder carefully at what this reveals about Allah, does it not prove that Allah is unmistakably a pagan deity? Firstly, for these pagans to pray to Allah, by specifically calling upon his name, means he was their deity. Secondly, Allah answered their prayers by transferring the snake. Why would Allah be happy to see the restoration of a pagan temple? At the time when the pagans wanted to rebuild the Kaaba, it was a pagan shrine housing 360 idols. These idols were only destroyed very much later by Muhammad at the conquest of Mecca. The account also states that it was Allah who initially sent the snake to guard the treasures of the Kaaba. Why would Allah want to guard the treasures of a pagan temple? If you find a place of worship being guarded by a snake today, with which religion would you associate it? Would you associate it with the monotheistic religions of Judaism and Christianity? Or would you associate it with paganism? Consider now the evidences from Islamic sources which show that the Kaaba was indeed a pagan shrine before the advent of Islam. Sahih Bukhari Volume Book 59 Number 583 Narrated by Abdullah When the Prophet entered Mecca on the day of the conquest, there were 360 idols around the Kaaba. Muhammad, the Holy Prophet by Hafiz Ghulam Sarwar Page 18-19 Second, the religion of the pre-Islamic Arabs. The life of the pre-Islamic Arabs, especially in the Hajjahs, depended on trade, and they made a trade of their religion as well. About 400 years before the birth of Muhammad, a descendant of Qatan and king of Hijaz, had put an idol called Hubal on the roof of the Kaaba. This was one of the chief deities of the Quraysh before Islam. It is said that there were altogether 360 idols in and about the Kaaba, and that each tribe had its own deity. The shapes and figures of the idols were also made according to the fancy of the worshippers. Besides Hubal, there was another idol called Shams placed on the roof of the Kaaba. The blood of the sacrificial animals brought by the pilgrims was offered to the deities in the Kaaba, and sometimes even human beings were sacrificed and offered to the god. Besides idol worship, they also worshipped the stars, the sun, and the moon. Based on the evidence provided here, we can clearly see that Allah is a pagan deity. As shown in the commentary by Imam al-Qurtubi, the pagans entreated Allah and he answered their prayers. In fact, Allah was just one among the many idol gods worshipped by the pagans at the Kaaba. Another interesting fact to consider is the name of Muhammad's father. His name was Abdullah Abdullah means slave of Allah, a constriction of Abdul, a slave, and Allah. Had there been no Allah in pre-Islamic Arabia, there could be no slave of Allah in pre-Islamic Arabia. Abdullah was not a Muslim and he died before the birth of Muhammad. He was a pagan and yet he carried the name of Allah. If Muhammad's pagan father was named the slave of Allah, then it logically follows that Allah must be a pagan deity. The fact is that Allah was a pre-existing deity in pagan Arabia who later became the god of Islam. The word Allah existed long before the word Muslim or Islam were coined. Having said that, let us get back to the subject of the beast, Allah's beast. In Surah 27, 82, Allah's messenger is an Arabic-speaking beast. No, we are not joking. According to the Quran, Allah will raise up a talking beast to emerge from the earth. This beast will allegedly appear at the time of the end when many will abandon the religion of Allah. Then Allah will cause this beast to separate the unbelievers from those who worship Allah and the beast will mark the unbelievers for destruction. It will be a real beast, and it will speak to the people in Arabic. It is also known as the beast of the earth in Islamic eschatology. In view of the incredible nature of this account in the Quran, we have provided three different translate surah 2007 TD2, and when the word is fulfilled concerning them, we shall bring forth a beast of the earth to speak unto them because mankind had no faith in our revelations. And when the word is fulfilled against them, the unjust, we shall produce from the earth a beast to face them. He will speak to them, for that mankind did not believe with assurance in our signs. Yusuf Ali, and when the word of torment is fulfilled against them, we shall bring out from the earth a beast to them, which will speak to them because mankind believed not with certainty in our eye. Verses of the Quran and Prophet Muhammad saw. Ilali Khan. It is important for the readers to remember two vital points. One, the beast will speak in Arabic. Arabic is the language of Allah. It is the language of the Quran. Two, the beast will act as a messenger of Allah. It will speak on behalf of Allah. 
It is personally sent by Allah with a warning message to the unbelievers. Jesus will come to save humanity again. The return of Jesus will usher in two different eternities, one with God and one without him. This truth is captured in two verses in the book of Malachi. Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays. And you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves, Malachi 4, 4, 1 to 2. What happens when Jesus returns? Evil is defeated, the earth is restored, and God wins. Your response to Jesus' return depends on your relationship with him. It will either be, as John MacArthur calls it, the greatest calamity in all of human history, or the fulfillment of the blessed hope, Titus 2.13. Faith in Christ makes the difference. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Treasure underneath Kaaba. The giant snake guards Kaaba as the treasure still remains untouched. There must be a way to the treasure. However, the path to the treasure might be covered due to past wars and conflicts. Allah's Messenger said, Three individuals shall fight one another for one of your treasures, and shall be killed, each one of them the son of a caliph, ruler, but none of them shall gain that treasure. Then, black flags shall appear from the east. They shall kill you in an unprecedented manner. Then, he mentioned something that I do not remember, and then he said, When you see him, the Mahdi, pledge your allegiance to him even if you have to crawl over snow, for he is al-Mahdi, the Caliph of Allah. The Quran confirms Muhammad is in hell. The true religion is like a letter written in the name of God. Examining the contents of the letter is essential to determine whether it is from God or not. There are too many contradictions in Islam for it to be a letter written in the name of God. Contradictions contradict the doctrine of God's infallibility. In addition, it shows that Allah is inconsistent in His ways. It disqualifies Him as the Almighty God. And Islam should be rejected not only for the many contradictions that can be found in the Quran, but also because it teaches that Allah is in... Additionally, many of the teachings of the Quran are founded on pagan mythology. When mythology is passed on as divinely inspired teachings of God, it becomes potentially dangerous. The Holy Bible alerts and forewarns us of this danger long before the coming of Islam. And today we value these loving warnings of our God. 1 Timothy 4.4 4. However, the inspired word clearly says that in later times some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to misleading inspired statements and teachings of Ephesians 5 or 6. Let no man deceive you with empty words, for because of such things the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Colossians 2, 8. Look out that no one takes you captive by means of philosophy and empty deception according to human tradition, according to the elementary things of the world, and not according to... Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the creator of all things, and you sustain all of life. I come to you, acknowledging that your will is best, and that your plan is far greater than any I could ever ask for or imagine. Lord, I come to you with troubles that are weighing on my heart and the hearts of many believers. God, I know that you carry all burdens, and I ask that you share your yoke with us no during this difficult time. God, you are a God of healing. If it is in your will, I ask that you heal, fill in the blank. But I know that whether you choose to heal them or not, that everything will work out according to your purpose. May I seek you in good times and difficult, and learn to trust you more every day. May you increase, and I decrease, as I learn to become more like you. Almighty and eternal God, by your Holy Spirit you have revealed to us the gospel of your Son Christ Jesus. Awaken our hearts that we may sincerely receive your word and not make light of it, or hear it without fruit, as did your people long ago. Instead, lead us to fear you and daily grow in faith in your mercy, and finally, through your Son Christ Jesus, obtain eternal salvation. Through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.